to do we arrange color in one palette challenge I forgot what it's called um, but I'm gonna be doing that with my Nickelodeon palette that I got a few months ago I think it was last month actually um, but I still haven't opened it because I've been wanting to use it for a bit yet. Of course, being a child of the 90s, um, I had to get this palette as soon as I found it at Hot Topic because the first time I went, actually I talked about this in my uh, nerd haul. Is that what I called it? I think I called it my nerd haul. And there is something also on here, but I can't find where it comes off. America, take notes from Japan and fix your packaging. That just needs better packaging. Anyway, so it comes with a brush and all the characters, well not all of the characters, but a lot of, a lot of well-known characters are on the palette, next to the mirror, and on the cover. And it looks like a cassette tape. I thought it was a um, videotape, but people keep calling it a cassette tape, so I guess it's a cassette. And I'm just putting on concealer because I'm not going to put on foundation because it's hot. It's like 100 degrees right now. It's freaking hot. So I'm just going to put on some concealer. So what I wanted to talk about was... Um, the spring season of anime because I meant to do reviews for the anime that I was watching but I never got around to it because a lot of stuff happened. I'm going to take my foundation brush and just blend. So starting off with probably the one that I talked about the most was Tokyo Ghoul and you know it wasn't bad but it wasn't particularly good either, especially not as good as the first two seasons, um, in my opinion. Of course, I am kind of an anime only when it comes to free. However, I do have one blue 14 of Tokyo Ghoul and I have the first five volumes of free, but I haven't gotten a chance to read them yet because right now I'm reading Dead Man Wonderland. Now, it wasn't bad but it wasn't my favorite season it was probably my least favorite season out of the three my favorite being root a followed by tokyo Ghoul, followed by rain so i'm going to take this blending brush and go in with i'm beautiful all over the red hopefully that will help the colors pop um it's just that they really didn't focus a lot on the characters as opposed to the previous two seasons. And so, like, I wanted to know more about Juzo and his um, team and more about Kaneki and how he was and his team and what they all meant to him. And more about Arima who took him in after their battle after stabbing him in the eyes like and he took him in and I wanted to know more about everything and it was, it was really reduced to a shonen anime which I watched Chibi reviews and he seems to think that this is the most accurate season which it might be I mean from my perspective Tokyo Ghoul was pretty accurate to the uh, manga, of course, they didn't incorporate everything. They never do. Um, Rue A was where it took a a completely anime original turn. And um, there's actually a reason for that. If you look at the 100 facts you didn't know about Tokyo Ghoul on Channel Federator, I think it is. Um, but I talked about this before. Um, they wanted to basically go off of what um, Ishida 
wrote in uh, the comic book that um, he worked with while he was writing um, Tokyo Go and Group A. They wanted to go with that um, concept. So that's why Route A is so different. But I still like it. Um, obviously it's my favorite season. And, you know, he seems to think that it's much more psychological, which I disagree. Tokyo Go and Route A, they... I think I'm gonna go in with pink on the inner corner about my face. And then, which is all dolled up, and then I'm gonna go basically in the color of the rainbow, kind of. They showed a lot more of the gruesome things that were happening in the anime. Like when Rize um, tried to kill Kaneki, that scene was gruesome. Like even the opening scene where um, Jason is killing somebody, I think, and eating them. Like my friend pointed it, like I never noticed, but my friend pointing it out when I suggested that she watch Tokyo Ghoul because it's, you know, psychological. And she pointed out that there was a jump scare, which I never noticed. Um, and that's kind of like why I recommend it to her because I'm like, it's not really like scary, but it's more psychological. And then she brought that up to me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Because we both don't like horror at all. Like, we don't like being scared. And free, like, they just didn't animate any of these scenes. And at least in, like, Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Rig A, um, they animated them even though they had to be censored. But there's uncensored versions that you can watch with this. They didn't show it. And so it's just, like, it takes you out of the experience. And, like, I understand why. But at the same time, like, y'all could done so much better. Also, I think I mentioned that I don't like the animation. I'm gonna go with You Idiot, which is the kind of mauve red color. One thing to do it because of censorship laws, but like Tokyo Ghoul and Fruit A got away with it and just had censors. But everybody wants to hit on that, but the fact that they just didn't animate it and Group A is like totally fine, even though there's censorship laws, and that's why they did that. But actual censors, nah, nah, you're gonna get burned at the stake for doing that, which I don't get. Um, and I just really didn't like, I understand why, if you read the manga, you would have like an attachment to. The characters during certain scenes because I'm like that when I read the manga or watch the anime and I've read the manga like you get attached to them through either medium so I'm gonna go in with Hi-Ho Dehi which is the red orange which is the orange color. you get attached to the characters but I just couldn't get attached to them maybe that's because I didn't read the manga because they cut a lot of stuff out um, and really didn't uh, go into more detail about the characters. They kind of just touched the surface of it and then they were like, okay, is that good? We're, we're good? Okay. Going on to the action, which I'm not an action fan. I've mentioned this many, many times, but I like romance and I like um, psychological anime. Which is why I like Tokyo Bowl and things like Mary and Nikki, that may wonder why. Okay, now I'm gonna go in on the lower lid and I think I should blend that out. So I think I'm gonna go in with little fish sticks and blend these kind of But yeah, even like the transformation sequence. Um I didn't know why. <clears throat> I didn't understand why he was transforming. Um, in my opinion, they didn't really explain it well. Which again, this anime was meant for manga readers. 
um, and didn't really explain things for the um, anime onlys. Uh, somebody did point out that they did go into why he was transformed because of um, the younger self. He said that he wanted to die or something, and they they actually did put that scene in, but I guess I just missed it. Even though I feel like I was watching the whole thing and paying attention and trying to, I must have missed that part. But I really didn't understand why he went through another transformation. Not that I'm opposed to transformations, like my favorite transformation has to be after he breaks free of Jason with his white hair. But I just feel like that scene could have been done better and explained better. And I feel like they didn't do that. Um, I also didn't understand why Hato suddenly loves Kaneki. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand why Kaneki was so mad at Hato when even in um, Re, they really did interact that much. I'm going to go back in with You Idiot and darken up this red color in the cream. Didn't feel anything for the deaths. Um, I wish they had gone into more detail about the black hair character, the new one. Because he actually seemed like the most interesting character. And they we really didn't didn't get to um, see much of him. I like what they did to Sukiyama. I think it should have been drawn out more. Because it kind of seemed like he went from uh, fawning over Kaneki to wanting to help him to hating him really quickly and we really didn't get any of the downtime to actually delve into his character more most of the time when we did meet his character he was in the shadows okay so now I'm gonna go in on the lower lid smashing on the inner corner well, actually, I'm, I think I'm going to do inner corner highlights. I'm going to go in with He Loves Me on the lower lid. I did watch Maho Shoujo Ore, which was supposed to be a comedy. It really wasn't that funny. Like, most of the comedy banked on the Yuri and the fact that the girl was in love with her best friend, and then another girl was in love with the guy version of her best friend. And then her best friend was in love with her and like the main character herself, I didn't understand any of her motivations because she was supposed to be in love with her best friend's brother. And I think he talked like three times during the whole anime and had no personality. I didn't understand why she liked him, which at least in Sailor Moon we knew why she liked him. In Tokyo Mimu, even though I don't agree with her choice to be with the guy that she left in the beginning, at least we still understood her motivation and why she liked him. He actually was pretty nice and they got along and he actually liked her back and everything. I don't understand why she liked him. I do appreciate that at the end, contrary to what I was thinking was going to happen, they had this amazing twin. We go in with Rar, which is the screen color for Reptar, obviously. So the twist at the end was nice, but other than that, it's not worth it. The other anime that I watched was Gungale Online Alternative, which was pretty good. Um, I still like Sword Art Online and Gungale Online a lot better because of the romance. And, you know, people are going to claim that Gungale Online is better because it doesn't have a lot of the details that Sword Art Online had, but those actually that you attach to the characters. Whereas this, nothing really happened. And then what did happen in real life is nothing really 
like important in my opinion like we understand the girl's motivation yeah that's all fine and dandy need more to go off of in my opinion and like she kept getting like <sighs> tricked or sexually assaulted which if you're gonna say that um, the girl kissing her at the end isn't sexual assault um, because it's Yuri and their friends. Then I would really urge you to question that because it's, it's still sexual. I was also watching Sar Card Captor Sakura, which is still ongoing. It's really good. The only thing I don't like really is that I'm gonna go in with um, I'm the boss. Because these are all shimmer shades, so I'm going to go in with football head in the outer corner. We are delving into um, Chauron and Sakura's relationship. I think it's funny that everybody keeps saying that Yue has all these emotions and is really bad at hiding how he feels. And he's like the straight-faced character in the anime, which is supposed to be funny. Like, I just find it funny that they keep saying that in, like, every episode. They're like, well, we can tell from your face what you're feeling and you can't hide it. It's just like, <laughs> really. Um, so that's funny. He has a lot more personality in Claire Card than he did in... The other series although he had more of a presence in the other series so there's that I think he cares more about Sakura and Claire Card than he did in um, the first two seasons so that might be why not like in a romantic sense just like he cares about her I don't like that the cards really don't have a personality aside from flight um, because in the previous two series seasons, I keep saying series, in the previous two seasons, each card felt like it had its own personality and everything. Whereas in this, I feel like the only one who actually has personality is Flight. Which, don't get me wrong, Flight is great. Okay, she's cute and adorable and she makes wings and everything, flies around. It's really cute. But I still want to know about the other cards. I also don't like that we're kept in the dark about why this is happening. Like, I need to know. And I feel like the um, guy with the glasses put a picture here. I forget their names. But I feel like he knows why all this is happening. And he didn't tell Sakura. But they still could have explained it to the audience. Like, done a clip of him talking about gonna have to wait and see. I am quite enjoying it because I was a card captor Sakura fan as a child. I even bought some club cards. Or I went to Anime Expo, bought them the lower lash line just to fit with um, a ball head just to tie it in. Um, And then on to, I'm going to talk about these at the same time. Uh, the three romances that I was watching, which were Love is Hard for Me, I'll Talk You. What's the other one? Tadaka Never Falls in Love. There was another one. I was watching. The one about the boy in high school and he's an otaku. It's another otaku related um, romance. Okay, so I only like. I could never falls in love. It did feel a bit rushed in the beginning, but it was still the best done romance of the season. Like how they ended it, although I think it could have gone for 24 episodes as opposed to 12. One about the boy in high school. I'll put a picture here so you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember the name right now. Um, probably tells you how memorable it was for me. It wasn't bad at first. However, the girl, I don't like her. She, not because she's a liar or whatever, because I really don't feel like she was lying. 
she at least told the boy that she was going to be leaving. But she kept getting mad at the main character for not understanding why she was upset. Yet she wouldn't tell him why she was upset. Even if it it had really nothing to do with him, it had something to do with outside forces that somehow related to him, she would still be upset at him for that. And then like not tell him why she was upset. I'm just like, so you, you expect him to know why you're upset and to understand why, but you're not gonna tell him why. Yeah. So I just didn't like that. I didn't appreciate that because it's not his fault. He's never been in a relationship before. And he keeps telling her like, no, I don't really hang out with people. So, and this is my first relationship. I don't really understand what I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't really understand. It was just frustrating to watch because she was the queen of just getting mad at him for things that were outside of his control. And then the things that were in his control, um, he, he still wouldn't understand if he wouldn't, she wouldn't explain to him why what he said was upsetting to her or, you know, anything. Even when he directly asked him to go back and with I'm the boss and blend these two colors together. Um, so that's why I didn't like that one. Um, also they kept like blurring out the kisses. I don't understand that. Love is hard for an otaku. Now, the main character was probably my best, my favorite part. It was the side characters I did because he would like insult his girlfriend and like she would like insult him back but at one point she was like really drunk and she got really upset over what he said, which was something along the lines of, I um, don't even like you or something like that. Like who could like you or something like that. And she gets really upset and his solution is to run after her and insult her again. I'm sorry, what? No, oh, that's not how you solve that issue. You don't solve an issue of verbal abuse with more verbal abuse and like she just goes along with it like she starts crying like happy tears because he's just I don't get it and this is supposed to be the more mature um anime because they're like all grown and stuff and I'm just like uh yeah it's real mature to insult your girlfriend instead of like apologizing for being verbally abusive i'm just gonna flick football head out um into the corner um and then the main characters i like them but their relationship moved really slowly and i really didn't feel like uh the girl was in the relationship because she liked him back but more because it made sense to for an otaku to be with another otaku so then they could be themselves and then they didn't really go on any dates and then when they address that issue um which mind you they're both otakus but then they go on a date and they force each other to act normal which I'm like, that defeats the purpose of going out with another otaku so that you can be yourself. I'm gonna go in with high ho diggity on the lower lash line just to tie it in with the top, with the crease and with the bottom. Because if you didn't know, orange and blue uh, are complementary colors. And they look really pretty together, especially like dark blue and like it's kind of like a yellow and orange color. So beautiful. But I just didn't like that. Like I wanted them to be themselves during the day and instead they were like if you talk about oh talk to related things then you have to pay a fee or something then it's just frustrating. Like you shouldn't be in a relationship if you can't be yourself. You know? So love is hard for no talk to you, it's getting a um 
another like season. Like if they're supposed to have twenty four. It was one of the the anime I was watching that they said that there was gonna be twenty four episodes and that's why it didn't have a conclusion. I think that was uh Love is Hard for Me Talking. And then I'm gonna go back in with um football head and blend it with the orange more. And if anything, I think Tata Kun never falls in love should get another season or come back in the fall or summer or whenever it's supposed to be coming back. But I don't think it is because they kind of resolved everything, like I said, pretty quickly. Although it was still believable that they were falling in love with each other. It just, I would have appreciated more time um, focused on it. My daddy sponge and going with smashing on the inner corner. I debated doing like um, series and reviews for these. But like it's been too long since they ended and like as soon as they ended I went to Anime Expo. I think I'm gonna go back in with He Loves Me on this high. As for the season of anime, I am currently watching a drama called Memory Love. Almost done with it. Well, I'll talk about that when I do my review. Um, after I finish Memory Love, I'm planning to watch Kiss Neighbor or Kiss Neighbor. And uh, watch that and watch Cells at Work because I didn't know it was already out before I started Memory Love and I can't not finish Memory Love because if I don't finish it then I'm never going to finish it. If you have any other recommendations, although when I looked at the anime list for summer season, it didn't look that interesting. The Cells at Work, I saw um, a promo for that at Anime Expo and it looked really interesting. I just didn't know it was out already. So it gives me time to kind of um, let the episodes air and then binge watch them. If you have any anime recommendations for this season, let me know. Preferably romance. Preferably, preferably good romance. I don't like action, so please if you're going to recommend something, please let me know what it is, what the basic premise is, and what it's about. And that's it. I'll take some pictures. Put them up here. But that's it.